So now we're ready to build our motor. So this is uh, project 15.1. And so I'll show you on the left what the final uh, output's gonna look like. So we have our protoboard, we have a magnet, um, we have this loop of wire that we've created into, um, into this coil. And then we have these two paper clips that are plugged into the protoboard and not shown as the battery and the battery clip that are also plugged in. Now, in order for this to work well, um, everything needs to be very mechanically stable. And so you have to pay a lot of attention to um, what you're doing when you're building the loop and also when you're building the holder for the loop, which are these paper clips. So what we're gonna use, um, so we need scissors, um, the loop of wire, the wire is gonna be about seven to 10 feet in length. Um, and then we're gonna cut it. Um, two paper clips, a AA battery, AA battery clip, protoboard, and um, the magnet. So those are the supplies that we're gonna need. So the first step is we're gonna build this loop and this loop is, is central to uh, the motor because it is the motor itself. Um, and it's gonna form an electromagnet that is gonna work with the permanent magnet to, to create the spinning. So this part is very important. We need to create a loop that's very tightly wound and that is in the same direction wound and also that is being held together with the wire itself. So it needs to be lightweight, it needs to be able to spin, but it needs to be mechanically robust. And the more loops that you put in, the stronger the permanent magnet might be making certain assumptions, um, but there's a little bit of a trade-off. So um, some of the things that we need to do that we need to be very careful with is on one side, we need to strip the entire wire all the way around. The other side, we only wanna strip the top half and it's the top half relative to when you look at this loop, if the loop circle is facing you and you see a circle, you wanna strip the top half. So it, it's a specific part of the wire that we wanna strip. And I'll explain this a little bit of why. So on the half that's on the side that's half exposed, um, we're gonna strip the top and we're gonna strip a little bit of the side. So it's better to strip a little bit more than 50% of the covering than a little bit less. And then after we do the stripping, we're gonna wrap each end around an additional time or two so that the exposed part of the wire goes all the way to the loop. So when we do the stripping, it doesn't have to be all the way to the end, but when we wrap it a few times, it'll go all the way to the end. That ensures that we have good electrical contact um, for our loop inside the holder. Also, when we lay out our parts on the Brut board, um, we wanna be careful where we plug things in. So I found that based on the width of the magnet, um, picking row B and row I are good choices for where the paper clips are going. You want the same column so that your loop is straight and uh, you wanna make sure everything is mechanically stable. So just be very careful with how you're mounting these things. And then the battery leads can go into rows A and J. And as I mentioned, um, things need to be mechanically stable. So without the battery plugged in, if I tap the loop, um, it should be able to spin on the axis of this holder um, a few times, which means that the way that I set this up, um, there needs to be a very good symmetry about the diameter of the circle. So I don't want my loop wires to go out diagonally um, or not at, uh, so the lines for the wires themselves should be very close to being straight. Um, this one is slightly bent because it was used in test and so it, it, it deforms a little bit due to gravity, but we want this to, to be straight. So um, let's go ahead and start um, uh, working with this. So the very first step is um, we gave you either seven to 10 feet of wire. Um, we're gonna make two um, uh, magnets, or sorry, two motors. So the first step is um, straighten out your wire. So stretch it out into um, a, a long uh, segment. And um, we're gonna cut into two, uh, two distances. So we're gonna cut it at one third and two thirds, or at one third and make the, the structure one third and two thirds long. So my initial thing is about seven or eight feet, and I'm gonna cut something that's gonna give me about two to three feet and something that's gonna give me four to five feet. And I'm gonna set aside, so I make the cut, I'm gonna set aside the smaller one. Um, on your own time, you can make the motor using the smaller one. So I have the bigger one, and the bigger one, in this case, um, it's a little bit too big, um, but that, that's fine. I have about six feet for the bigger one. Um, yours might be like four or five. And we want to wrap and create this tight loop. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the battery um, as our template for wrapping. 
So we're essentially just going to um, put the, um, the, the wire. We're going to leave about two inches, so two segments in my finger, um, two inches that's not going to be wrapped. And then we're going to take the remaining part and I'm going to wrap it close to the positive end because that'll simplify the, one of the later steps. Um, we're going to create a tightly wrapped loop. So the, the loop that we're, we're making, as I mentioned, it should be tightly wrapped and it should be going in the same direction. So I just want to keep wrapping this over itself um, many times until I'm left with uh, about two inches on the opposite side. And unfortunately, when I was unwrapping this, I, I created a tiny knot. So I, I noticed as I'm wrapping my loop, um, it's going to be unbalanced. So we'll see if this still works. Uh, hopefully uh, it does. Um, I may need to make a second loop. We'll see. So um, I have uh, a little bit more to go. All right, so I have about two inches left on either side. And so now the next step is I want to, so okay, I have about two inches here and I have about two inches there. The next step is I want to strip the wire. So on the, in the diagram, the left side is completely stripped, the right side is half stripped. So I'm gonna use a piece of paper on my uh, desk because I don't wanna scratch up my desk. Um, and I'm right-handed, so I'm going to first strip off the side that's completely stripped. So I'm gonna do um, the, the, the left side of what's in the diagram, but the right side overall. So you can use uh, scissors, you can use a screwdriver. Um, you just need something that's sharp and flat. And um, what I find is that um, I want to hold the scissors or the sharp edge um, at a very shallow angle. And then I can either pull the scissors or I can pull the, the battery in order to strip the wire. So I'm gonna do a little bit of both. So you can see as I do this, there's a little bit of green stuff that gets on the scissors. And that means that I've stripped the wire. So I need to turn the wire over because I'm stripping this thing completely on the side. So shallow angle and just rotate about and make sure that you get all the different sides. So I'm gonna twist the wire a little bit. And if you go too steep and accidentally cut the wire, no, no worries. Um, just unloop a little bit more around the battery um, so un undo some of the loop, and then you have a fresh piece to, to strip at the end. So um, I stripped it a little bit, and I can use my fingernails to clean off and make sure that I've stripped this thing all the way around. So I can look and just see and inspect. And go a little bit with my fingernails, a little bit more. Um, okay, so I pulled off the, the, the insulation on one side. Um, complete on one end, completely all the way around. It looks like I missed a little bit. So my fingernails are, are helping to get that, that tiny bit more of the, the wire. So, okay, so that's completely stripped all the way around. The other side, I only want to strip half. So again, relative to the orientation of the loop, I want to strip the top half. So with this the way it is, um, I want to strip this top half rather than holding it like this and stripping this side. And I'll explain why we do that in a little bit. Um, for simplicity, I have it so that the bottom of the loop is flat against the, the table. So it's on the underside of the battery. That way it can lay flat against the table so that I can strip this half. So I'm going to, uh, again, uh, go with a flat angle and pull with it. Okay, so I've done just the top half of this end. So this end is just the top half. Um, I'm gonna just clean it up a little bit with my fingernail, um, but just the top half, the bottom half is uh, unstripped. And then on the opposite side, it was completely stripped. So in this process, my loop has gotten a little bit unwound. So what I wanna do is I wanna push this back in and I wanna pull this back taut so that I have a very tight loop. Okay, now that I've tightened this loop up a little bit and I've stripped the, the components, um, I'm going to pull the loop out of the battery and I find that the positive end is a little bit easier to pull it out. And when I pull this out, I wanna hold the loop together so that it doesn't spring loose. 
So now I have um, one half is, uh, or one end is completely stripped, the other end is half stripped. And again, as I mentioned, uh, we want to have these uh, tie points go through the diameter of the loop. So I'm going to loop this around and make a few um, uh, mini loops around the big loop just so that I can get this to face the direction that I want. So this is the side that is half stripped. It looks like I didn't do that great of a job of half stripping it, um, but I will proceed. And I want to orient the side that's stripped to be the top facing side or the bottom facing side. I don't want it. So what I mean by that is when I hold it this way, I want to see this be very shiny and be shiny all the way up to the edge. When I hold it like this, I should see the boundary between shiny and not shiny. So as soon as I turn it a little bit, um, I should see it start to get shiny. It should be the maximum shininess when I'm holding the loop vertically like this so that it, the, the, the circle is viewed from the side. So I think I've done that. Um, my loop is not that great, but it should work. And then the other side, um, again, I want this to go through a diameter. So I want this to, uh, to be straight. So I'm going to loop again. Yes. So next up, you're going to take the two inch ends of the wire. Oops. And you're going to loop it through. Pull it out the other end and do that maybe two or three times because we want to make sure that the loop stays in place and stays snug. So I just did two windings there, turn it around, using the other side, do the same thing. Wind it through about twice. All right. Okay, so I can see I have exposed winding right up against the edge and this is going completely straight um, to this side. And when I look at this, when I rotate it this way, um, the key part is that this part is exposed at the top and not exposed at the bottom. Okay, so that is how I've created my loop. Um, so the side that is fully stripped is on the left. Okay, so I'm gonna set aside the paper. Um, the next step is to work with the paper clips to make these holders. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the outermost bend and I'm going to flatten out the outermost bend of the paper clip. So I take this part and I'm just expanding this out. And this is what's going to allow me to create a loop. So hold that and expand this out. So I have something that looks like that. Okay, and then I want this to be as straight as I can get it. So I'm gonna bend it a little bit more and so that's straight. And then I do the same with the other paper clip. I open out the outermost edge. And it's important that these paper clips um, be the same length. So these are gonna plug into the board. Um, so I, I expanded out both of them in the same way. Okay, now we're ready to plug things into the uh, breadboard. So the first is we place our magnet um, somewhere in the center and I'm going to just pick arbitrarily that I'm going to work in column 30. So I put one end of the loop for the first paper clip in 30B. The other end, and you'll notice that the paper clip is attracted to the magnet, so that has positives and negatives, um, or pluses and minuses. So the other end I'm putting in 30I, and you'll notice that I have them facing the same way, and that allows the, um, the loops to be stable. So I need to make sure that these are straight. So all the way in and roughly the same height. I'm gonna bend my loops a little bit so that they, they look good. Now, when I insert my loop that I've created um, into this holder, so they're gonna go on these paper clips, um, there's a trick which is I slide it from the bottom side underneath, and then I slide it up on both sides and in. That minimizes the amount of stress that I put on my loop. So these wires, we want them to be um, approximately straight. And you can see that this is gonna, if I tip it with my finger, um, it spins a little bit on its own. So that's gonna be a good sign that my system is mechanically stable. 
If I tip it and it doesn't swing back and forth, um, then that is an indicator that um, my loop isn't good enough um, or my clips are not holding very well. Okay, so now the final part is we're gonna power the system. So we're gonna plug in, um, I'm not gonna put the battery in just yet. Um, I'm gonna plug in one end to uh, 30A and the other end to 30I. And I'm going to plug in the battery. Now the theory behind this is that um, this loop is gonna spin when it's making uh, electrical contact and then it's just gonna continue with its existing momentum when it doesn't have um, connection. So I should see, depending on, so right now when I look at it, on um, this side, I can see the shiny, and this side I can see um, it's shiny at, let's see where, um, the shiny when it's about here. So that means it's not on as a magnet when it's here, and it's on as a magnet when it's here. Okay. So I'm going to plug this in now. And I'm going to give this uh, a little bit of a tap and see whether it spins on its own. So it, it looked like it spinned a little bit. So, okay, but then it stopped. So let me try spinning it the opposite way. So just looking at this, I can tell my loop is not symmetric. So I'm going to fix my loop a little bit. Um, so let me take this out. I'm just going to pull it out because I can tell my loop is not symmetric. So let me rewrap this a little bit and just straighten this out a bit. Um, and then let me just double check where the stripped wire goes. Um, I think I need to do one more loop on this side so that I, I know for sure that I'm making electrical contact uh, when it spins around. So um, I just made one extra loop there. And then when I flip it over, ah, there's the contact. OK, so I can see now here's where it's stripped. And here is where it's not stripped. And then on this side, yeah, it's stripped all the way around. So let me try this again. And then let me check my loop. The paper clips are facing straight. There's a little bit of sag. OK, so this looks a little bit more symmetric. So let me do the tap again. Ah, it's spinning for a while, and then it stopped. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, so I think my loop is slightly unbalanced, like it, it swings a little bit and then it either the loop is unbalanced or the way that I've um, uh, made contact at the bottom isn't quite right. So it, right now it's oscillating back and forth rather than spinning. Um, I think it's a little bit off center, so let me try tapping it again. Okay, so it was spinning one way and then it decided to spin the other way, so I think I need to tap it this direction. Nope. Well, it's moving. <laughs> it, I think the way that I've stripped the wire or the way that I've wrapped it, um, I'm not getting the contact that I want. So right now, this, this side is completely contacting. This other side, it contacts a little bit, but it's not contacting at the right Part. So let me look at the wire stripping again on, on this side. So I'm going to just pull this out. So this one on this side, yeah, it looks like it's exposed there. So I'm going to um, strip it a little bit more again. I may be under or over, uh, may have removed too much or too little. So let me push this back out a loop or two so that I have more wire that I can, I can strip. So, okay, so this is the side that I was stripping before. 
Yeah, I suspect that I haven't stripped 50%, I'm less than 50%. So I'm gonna do a little bit at the sides, but not too much. Okay, and then I'm gonna wrap this back so that I have the two ends of the wire in a straight line. So when I look at here, the top is exposed. I may have stripped too much. Well, we'll try it again. <laughs> so again, I load it from the bottom. Try to make this flat, straight. There we go, give it a tap. And there it goes, and it's it's bump, it's jumping up and down. So I think uh, the issue was that it just wasn't uh, stripped well enough. So you definitely have to practice it to be able to get um, this to to spin well. So yeah, so my motor is really flying now. Okay, so let me um, uh, give some more things to think about. So. Um, Okay, so the first question that uh, we should ask and what students should think about is, um, why do we only strip the top half of the loop? Like, why just half and not, not all of it? And, and the answer for that um, is some more questions. So one question to ask is, does the motor spin as well in both directions? So try spinning it one way and try spinning it the other way. Um, I can uh, show you that in this case, mine is spinning this way. Um, and if I stop it and try to spin it the other way, it, no, it says I'm going to spin the original way that I was spinning. So mine does not spin the same in both directions. Um, what happens if I reverse the red and black wires? So try this out and see what happens to your, um, your motor. What happens if I flip the magnet over? So right now it's facing some arbitrary direction. And if I flip the magnet over, um, does it spin in the same direction? Does it reverse? These sorts of things. So let me, um, so let me allow you to try these things out. And I'm going to unplug my, my motor just so that it's, well, I'll let it run so you can see how, how great it is that it, <laughs> it constantly runs. Um, but um, let me go into some of the theory behind uh, the motor. So the permanent magnet uh, produces what's known as a magnetic field. The magnetic field is the direction that if you had a compass to, to measure north and south, um, it would be the direction that the compass points. Um, it's also, if I have a set of iron filings, so very thin magnetic um, uh, strips, um, that's the direction that these things would align to. So in this picture, I've drawn it so that the, the magnetic field, which we label by B, actually we call it the magnetic flux density, um, but just think magnetic field or magnetic flux density. Um, it, in this case, I have it as uh, some arrow that points downwards. So when I have my loop, um, the loop produces its own magnetic field. Um, it's very weak compared to the permanent magnet because we're not flowing uh, a ton of current through it. Um, but the loop itself um, has its own magnetic field B and it wants to align in the same way if you put north and south poles together, they're gonna, they're gonna attract, whereas north and north are gonna push apart. Um, it's going to want to, oh, it looks like my loop has, has slowed down. Um, so one other thing is you should check that your battery is not getting hot. So mine is not getting hot, so that's not the issue. So I just needed to give it another uh, start, but um, the, the electromagnetic loop, um, it wants to rotate to align to the magnetic field of the permanent magnet. So if it's oriented at an angle, um, it wants to get pulled so that these two Bs align to each other. Now, if I strip both sides completely, the loop will just swim, swing back and forth. Like if both sides are, 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 are removed, then this would just go back and forth, um, uh, and you wouldn't get it to make complete revolutions. 
So instead, what we do is we only strip the top half. And we strip the top half because we want the loop to be pulled all the way when it's, sorry, I've recreated it here. Um, we want the loop to be uh, accelerated so that it spins to point downwards. When it crosses and it's just barely at the top, all the way till it points to the bottom. So when it's here, when it's here, we want it to be rotating in this direction. If we go a little bit further, we want the magnet to turn off and not be accelerated back and forth like back down here. So in the left half, when it's pointing to the left, um, the field is off, so there's nothing that is getting pulled. And then when it starts pointing to the right, we want it to be accelerated downwards. So some of the things that you should see is that your loop spins better in one direction compared to the other. And you should also see that the preferred direction for it to spin changes if you reverse the current. So if I switch the red and black wires or if I flip the magnet over. So those are things that, that students can explore and verify that that's indeed what happens. So hopefully you got some uh, good experience uh, with this, this project of um, the sort of uh, being able to build things out of ordinary objects on um, this, this motor that demonstrates the principles of, um, uh, of, of magnets and, and uh, electromagnets. And the idea that if I have um, uh, electrical energy, I can convert it to mechanical energy through the principle of the motor. Um, there's another project which is to do the opposite. So it's a generator. So by spinning something, I can generate electrical energy and it uses some of the same principles, but some principles are, are new. Um, so with that, I would just want to remind you when you're done with your motor project, um, disconnect the battery. So when I disconnect the battery, my motor should shut off. Um, so it shuts off. Um, and then at the end of the day, just, yeah, always make sure to disconnect your, your power from your source. Um, so with that, uh, we'll end.